Assalamualaikum. And today's topic is uh, the anatomy of the uterus. And uh, the uterus, uh, you know, is uh, thick-walled and pear-shaped uh, hollow muscular organ. As you can see in uh, this picture, and that uh, this is the picture of the uterus. It's pear-shaped. It's a hollow muscular organ, and it is uh, meant for uh, keeping the embryo and the fetus in side uh, to uh, give um, uh, uh, the childbirth afterwards and when it's a non-pregnant uh, uterus it lies in the lesser pelvis here, here you could see this you could lies in the uh, lesser pelvis yes here and uh, this uh, is a very dynamic structure this uterus and when it um, is uh, during the stage of pregnancy, it changes its position and rises above uh, this level. And um, so its size and proportions change during the various changes, uh, st stages of life. So the shape of the uterus uh, is known as antiverted and antiflexed. So what is an antiverted and antiflexed? That we could demonstrate from this picture. Like you see, uh, there is one axis of vagina. As you could see the axis of vagina, and uh, the other is the axis of the uterine body, and the third one is the axis of the cervix. So it's a three axes uh, taking place um, uh, at this uh, three structures: the vagina and uh, the cervix and the uh, uterus so the angle between the um, uh, axis of the cervix and the axis of the vagina is the angle of antiversion this this is angle of antiversion this is angle of vagina and the angle of cervix this is angle of antiversion and the uh, other angle is the angle of antiflexion this is between the angle of the uterine body here it goes uterine and the um, uh, this um, uh, other is the again angle of uh, the axis of the cervix. This this is the angle of antiflexion. This is the normal angles, the normal positions of the uh, bladder and uh, the um, uterus. They also can be changed uh, when uh, the uterus becomes this is uh, becomes uh, retroflexed and retroverted. Here, here you could see uh, that uh, this is a CT scan of the um, uterus which shows that the, in this position the uterus is uh, the position is um, anti-verted and anti-flex and this is almost a horizontal uh, position and um, here in the, um, the distended bladder uh, position the um, uterus becomes a retroverted and retroflexed. So this is the um, thing and on the, the size of the uterus varies considerably though uh, when the uterus is the non-gravid state, the non-pregnant, it is approximately 7.5 centimeter long, 5 centimeter wide and 2 centimeter thick and weighs approximately 90 grams. So there are the various parts of the uterus. Here you could see and uh, in the various parts and uh, yes here they are demonstrated well this is the body of the uterus right then the cervix body and the cervix the main part this is the body and this is the upper part is known as the fundus and the part between the cervix and the body is called as the isthmus and the cervix has two parts which is the supravaginal and the vaginal part parts of the cervix that protrudes into the vagina is the vaginal part and the part of the cervix that is within the uh, uterus the uterine cavity is the supravaginal part so it's various parts of the um, uterus this is written over here in the powerpoint slides you can read there Right, you see the body of the uterus, which is precisely forms the superior two thirds of the organ. It includes the fundus, which is a rounded part, and, uh, which lies superior to the uterine ostia. Yes, you see this. This is 
body. So this is the part, body is a two third part and the cervix is the lower one third part. So body uh, lies between the layers of the broad ligament, so freely movable. It has two surfaces, vesicle and the intestinal. Vesicle is related to the bladder and uh, the intestinal is related to the, of course, intestine, like the sigmoid. You could see in the picture, yes, you see. So this is the, you know, bladder. So this is the surface related with the bladder, the vesicle surface. And this is related with the, uh, your intestine, and this is the intestinal part of the uterus. And uh, this is very important diagram describing various um, parts of the uterus, its ligaments, whatsoever, and uh, it tells this is the this is the broad ligament of the uterus. This here it goes. This this is the uh, uterus, and this is the broad ligament of the uh, uterus. And on the sides of the uh, uterus is attached the broad ligament. So uh, the uterus has an external os and an internal os. What are the external os and the internal os? It, again, we'll uh, see it with the help of the diagram. So this, you know, is the uh, body of the uterus. This is the cervix. And the, that was the opening which communicates with the vagina. This is vagina. This is the vaginal orifice. So this is the external os. And that part of the cervix which um, communicates with the uterine canal, the uterine cavity is the internal os. So two os, external and internal os. And uh, vaginal fornix, what is this? This is the vaginal recess which surrounds the uh, your intern, uh, external os. So now the uterine cavity, the uterine horns, and the cervical canal. You could see again in the uh, diagram. Yes, you see the that part of the ovarian tube this is the ovarian tube this is the uterus the opening of the ovarian tube into the uh, uterine um, uh, cavity is the uh, your horn this is the horn of the uterus and this uh, uh, the central portion which, which is which is hollow uh, this is known as a uterine cavity this is the uterine cavity and uh, this portion is the, this is the cervical canal. So uh, now we have to learn uh, what is the birth canal. This is basically the cervical canal and the lumen of the vagina. Basically, this is, as you can see, this is the cervical uh, canal and the lumen of the vagina. This is the birth canal through which the um, fetus passes uh, through the spontaneous vaginal de delivery, which is known as the SVD. So, uh, three quotes of the wall of the body of the uterus which you already familiar is to learn in the developmental anatomy the embryology in the first year even there are the three layers of the perimetrium myometrium and endometrium perimetrium is the outermost covering which is a peritoneum supported by thin layer of the connective tissue myometrium is the main middle coat which so consists of smooth muscles so it's very important thick uh, layer and um, it's responsible for contractions um, uh, during the uh, your um, uh, uh, childbirth which is due to the force generated under the influence of hormones that is the uh, responsible for uh, expulsion of the uh, fetus and the placenta out of the birth canal 
so the endometrium is the innermost coat which um, is uh, responsible for the process of menstruation if conception occurs the blastocyst becomes implanted in this layer so it grows further if uh, the conception or fertilization does not occur uh, the inner surface of the coat is shed during menstruation the ischemia occurs and the menstrual blood uh, loss occurs so this is the thing and the ligaments of the uterus very important the ligaments of the uterus first of all is uh, this is a ligament of the ovary and that is the ligament the round ligament of the uterus you see in this simple diagram this is the round ligament of the uterus this is uterus the round ligament of the uterus is up in this round ligament of the uterus and uh, then is the uh, this uh, uh, ligament of the ovary in this diagram both upper this is the round ligament of the uterus this is the ligament of the ovary there's two ligaments which are attached to the uh, uterus So very important broad ligament of the uterus. It is a double layer of peritoneum. Peritoneum is you known as mesentery that extends from the sides of the uterus to the lateral wall and floor of the uh, pelvis. It's very important. And you could see its diagram. Yes, here it is. This is uterus. This is fundus, this body. And on the sides from this is going to the double fold of the peritoneum, the mesentery going towards the side of the pelvis. This is known as the broad ligament of the uterus which consists of the three parts described very soon so laterally the peritoneum of the broad ligament is prolonged superiorly over the vessels at the suspensory ligament of the ovary you could see the suspensory ligament here you see yes this, this is the suspensory ligament of the ovary now the three parts of the broad ligament of the uterus, what is the meso-ovarium, that is the meso -salpinx, and the third is the meso -metrium. What is the meso -salpinx? This is the, that part going uh, in the sides, which envelops, attaches to the sides of the uterine tube. So this is the meso -salpinx. If you know the salpinx is um, the other name of the uterine tube. Uh, and uh, like you know the process of hysterosalpingography, salpingography, this is the process. So this is a um, thing. So this is the meso -salpings. And This is the meso-ovarium. This is the mesentery part of the broad ligament that uh, attaches to the um, ovary. And the last part, the mesometrium, which is uh, it, it itself, um, uterus, uh, it um, has its uh, mesentery. So uterus mesentery itself is called as the uh, this meso -metrium. So uh, the questions often comes in the exam, right? The supports of the uterus. So there are various ways to describe some books say it's fibromuscular sports and the facial sports and uh, here we'll following a book the KLM they say the passive sports and the active or dynamic sports we will follow this what is the dynamic sport of the uterus the dynamic sport is uh, provided by the pelvic diaphragm pelvic diaphragm so pelvic diaphragm tone uh, during sitting and standing and active contraction during periods of increased intra-abdominal pressure is transmitted through the surrounding pelvic organs and the endopelvic fascia in which they are embedded. So the passive, so you see dynamic support of the uterus is provided by the pelvic diaphragm. The passive support this is uh, provided by the position of the uterus, which is the normal position is the antiverted and antiflexed. And 
and the uterus rests on the top of the bladder. Then cervix, it is least mobile part of the uterus because of the passive support provided by attached condensation of endopelvic fascia, which are the ligaments. Cervix is very less mobile. So again the passive supports that is the cardinal ligament, transverse cervical, suddenly cardinal ligaments or the transverse cervical ligaments and the uterosacral ligaments, uterosacral ligaments, you see them in the diagram, you, you can see. These are the your um, transverse sacral ligaments and this is the uterosacral ligaments, you can see, uterosacral ligaments. So here the transverse uh, uh, cervical ligament is uh, attached to the side of the cervix and going on the sides of the uh, pelvic wall. Yes, here it goes. Yes, this is the transverse cervical ligament. And uh, this is the uterosacral ligament. Uh, this is attached from the sides of the cervix to the uh, sides of the sacrum. Very strong ligaments, these both. The transverse cervical ligament and the, this uh, transverse cervical ligament is also called cardinal ligament and the uterosacral ligaments uh, which is um, I told you attached from the sides of the cervix to the middle of the sacrum. Supports of the uterus site this is the thing so Here you could see again I'm telling you this is the cardinal ligament transverse cervical and this is the your uh, uterosacral ligament it is because these are the uh, again the facial ligaments the ligaments of the uterus formed by the fascia so this is the uh, vaginal wall this is the uterus and uh, these are the fallopian tubes, these are the horns. So this is the ligament of the ovary, this is the round ligament of the uh, uterus, this is the uterosacral ligament, and this is the cardinal and the transverse ligament. Uh, transverse ligament. These are the ligaments formed by the fascia. So, uh, relations of the uterus, you see uh, this is covered, uterus is covered by uh, peritoneum and uh, you see importantly this is peritoneum going um, on anteriorly, it is reflected on to the uterus and uh, to, uh, then it reflects on the bladder, so it forms a pouch is well familiar with that vasico uterine pouch and posteriorly uh, it forms um, the pouch which is reflection on the sigmoid from the pouch of Douglas or the recto uterine pouch. These are the main relations. So these two pouches and then there is a summary of the relations. This is so of course anteriorly is the vasico uterine pouch and the superior surface of the bladder, supravaginal part of the cervix and posteriorly recto uterine pouch which contains loops of small intestine and the interior surface of the rectum. And the laterally you know the peritoneal broad ligament laterally it should be pictured many times already so now come the blood supply so first you see the arterial supply which you, you could see first of all is the uterine artery it supplies the uh, uterus and uh, then is the vaginal artery main this is two the uterine artery and the vaginal artery so then the uterine veins these are uh, uterine veins we form the plexus which is the uterine plexus 
which drains into the internal iliac veins. Uterine plexus. This is the uterine plexus. So age changes in uterus. Today's last topic, the age changes in uterus. Before going that, let's have a quick review of what we have learned. So if it's, if it's the uterus, what is the shape of the uterus? Uterus, the other word of the uterus is womb. In English it's known as womb. But it's the, where the birth process takes place. The embryo and the fetus um, is uh, developed uh, here. And it's a muscular organ. It's hollow, thick walled and pear shaped. You should see pear shaped, thick walled and hollow. And uh, when it is in the non-gravid state, that means not pregnant, this, this lies in the, uh, you see, the uterus uh, lies in the lesser pelvis. Then the various parts of the uterus are the, your, uh, this uh, body. The cervix. Body is upper two third. The cervix is the lower one third. And the body upper part is known as the fundus. And the cervix is the lower one third. And the very small one centimeter part is between the body and the cervix, which is known as the isthmus. Then this are the parts of the cervix which is the supravaginal and the vaginal that part which is uh, within the vaginal or uh, in the vaginal orifice that is the vaginal and that is which is above the vaginal part which protruding into the uh, uterine canal that is the supravaginal part the cervix and this is the thing These part where the um, uh, uterine tube enters into the um, uterine cavity is the horn, uterine carnu or uterine horn. Uterine horn is also known as uterine carnu. And uh, so again, just quickly, the revision is going to end. The weight of the uterus is 90 grams and uh, and its dimensions are 7.5 multiplied by 5 and 2 centimeter. And the angle of antiversion and angle of antiflexion. You see there are axis, axis of cervix, axis of vagina and the axis of uterine body. The angle formed between the axis of cervix and the angle of vagina is the angle of antiversion. And the angle formed between the axis of cervix and the axis of the uterine body is the angle of antiflexion. These are the normal angles. When they get reversed, like the bladder is full, they, then they are called as the retroversion and the retroflexed. So I told you about the external loss and the internal loss. This external loss, yeah. external loss, internal loss. And the birth canal, I, I told you, the part of the cavity of the cervix and the vaginal orifice forms the birth canal. The three parts of the wall of the body of the uterus, perimetrium, myometrium and endometrium. And I also explain the ligaments, ligaments of the ovary, down ligament of the uterus, broad ligament of the uterus, then the mesocelpinx, again quickly you see again, here it, these are, this is the broad ligament, this is the three parts, meso-ovarium, which is connected with the ovary, the mesocelpinx connected with the uterine tube and the mesometrium which is connected with the uterus itself. Uh, this is the ligament, round ligament of the uterus. This is the ligament of the ovary. And uh, this is the suspensory ligament of the ovary. Uh, 
Uh, you, could, you could see the uterosacral ligaments. So these are the transverse cervical ligaments. These are the supports of the uterus. And the relations, you know, vesico uterine pouch and the recto recto segment the pouch of the Douglas recto uterine pouch. So blood supply, I told you this is uh, from the uh, uterine artery and the vaginal artery, and the venous uh, is, uh, drainage is through the venous plexus, which drains in the internal iliac vein. So age changes, uh, there you see in the newborn, uh, the cervix is larger, the, the ratio is 2 into 1. 4 years, the ratio becomes 1 into 1. The cervix is still again very large. And at puberty, the ratio is 2 into 1. So this is the 2 ratio, normal ratio, which is the 2 parts of the body and 1 is the cervix. And this is also the nulli paris adult. Nulli paris means which has never given birth to anybody, any baby. So this is 2 1 ratio. And this is the multi paris given birth to many uh, children. The, they, there the body size increases very much. This increases 3 and this is 1. And then the postmenopausal old age uterus becomes atrophic and decreases in size. So this is all. Thank you very much.